Hi, my friend. It is Block Wednesday, and today is the 19th block for our Home Is So Along, and it is called Good Neighbors. Having a good home includes the people who live next to you. I have lived in every type of complex, be it apartments with people above and below me, uh, duplexes, um, townhouses where there's people on both sides, so, and now single family home. So my neighbors are close, but not too close, which is nice. I can't put my hands between our houses like Greg could do when his home, when he was a kid, he could stand between the houses like this. And those are kid arms, not his man arms that he did that. <laughs> so they were close, but your good neighbors are important. And today we want to celebrate them uh, because they make our home really nice and cozy. And yes, we're not going to talk about the bad neighbors. Everybody has had an experience with somebody who's less than a good neighbor, but we're not going to celebrate that today. Today we'll just focus on our good neighbors. And we are very lucky. We live on a cul-de-sac and we live up a long driveway at the end. So we share our driveway with very good neighbors who have been here for a long time. They're probably the fourth or fifth people that have lived in that house and we adore them. They're wonderful. Okay, so the block is in a pattern and I wanna just talk about the pattern one second because there are a few people who are either joining new or just are not used to my patterns for this home is. I may have gotten a lot of people doing my sew along for the very first time. And even though we are on block 19, I'm getting questions that uh, you sh should have been figured out much sooner. So the pattern is multi-pages and I did this one, um, I meant to do a double-sided, but the print didn't come out that way. So you've got the pattern, the, you know, the story, uh, cutting, sewing, all the block. And then here is the block diagram. So for those of you who don't want to read anything because you're more advanced and you can just look at what you need on here, this is for you. And then following that, I have it a bonus, bonus layout tables, runners, laptops, small quilts, uh, showing you the block and repeat, and then a, a bonus coloring diagram for those of you who want to sort of shade colors. And then after that is the layout of the quilt. And so people seem to be missing this one. I show you where the block goes. It's circled right here. Uh, this doesn't have any of the directions for cutting it because that was a pattern I gave you weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks ago. So here are all the cutting, and this is a full pattern of like eight pages. Ah, page eight. But you have to print this off and use it. This is what tells you all the sashing directions, etc. But for placement, I put this on every single pattern. And I'm still having people asking where to do this and where to get this. And we've been going on for 19 weeks. So I'm hoping that today now, uh, that you're watching this and if you have been confused about that uh, you're now up to speed we need to get everybody on the same page I will always be happy to help you figure out where things are so the block let's look at the fabric first because I am now on really tight color control so even though this is a blue and white quilt i don't want to lump a great big bunch of light stuff at the bottom or a great big bunch of dark stuff at the bottom i want it nicely balanced and so here is a picture here of where i am currently so i want to make this block it has three basic uh, sections to it a sort of a, a dark let me get the diagram Ooh, page, page, page. So you've got the dark outer, and then this uh, medium, then a light, and then a dark in the middle. And you could either put the light in the middle again or a different dark. So here is a dark that's not super dark. It's not like the deep navies. It's the medium, then a lighter, then I could repeat with this uh, little floral. Now here is one using the really dark and then pulling in some gray because I haven't had uh, as much gray in it down in this bottom section. And then one of the other lights, which has less pattern to it. It's a lighter pattern, lighter feel. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do a couple, a couple others here. This dark, 
uh, it doesn't have a lot of pattern to it versus this one, which has quite a bit of pattern. So I want to just play around with this because the next section, this gray here, I could do something with more pattern. So if I did this piece here, uh, then in the, the very light part, I actually could do something fun. I could, no, that's not that, sorry. I could do the gray if I wanted to pull more gray, or I could use the background fabric like this, and then repeat this in the middle, or repeat something else in the middle. But if I wanted to use this and do something, a, another, another choice, here's light blue, and then if I wanted to pull in some gray, that might look good with that one, and then repeat the dark in the middle. Which do you think I'll choose? Let's take a look. And we have a good neighbor block. There we go, ta-da! I really like these fabrics. Of course, it would be super fun to try those other combinations and see what they look like too, because I bet they would all look really great. I think it's the kind of block where you could do this in repeat. You could actually even set it side by side. I have a sashing on the recommended one, but even side by side would be kind of neat. It would create a different effect, uh, but it would be fun to play with around with a lot of different fabrics for this. Now I want to show you one more thing on here so that you don't freak out because it's designed like this, you are not matching this to that seam. Do you see that? These are oversized. They are not touching that seam. It is the way I designed it. There you go. Want to be sure you weren't freaking out about that. Somebody's going to be like, it's not working. And actually it is. I am using directional fabric for the corners. So this is the one that I picked to work with. And I wanted to give you another tip here about keeping these all the same direction. And it's really just about being focused on what you're doing. So I put them down in front of me in the right direction. So these all have the hoops going up because when I have the finished block, I want the hoop at the top of each of the four corners. But we're doing sew and flip. Remember, this is the block and they're in different corners. So I can't just do this without thinking. So my corners are all going to be laid out now as well. And then that way I have them all positioned. And I will keep these sitting here. I also have just to the left here, all of my other parts. So now I am ready to go ahead and sew this guy up. Let's come over here. We lift up, 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 got the whole quilt on the wall. It's looking good. Now this block will go on this portion. There we go. And so now I can actually sew that section. So we just have a couple more pieces over here. Now I do have the sashing for that lower part and I'm debating. I might go ahead and pick some fabric for that and sew it. Um, then we have, I think, two more blocks. Uh, what does it got on there? What's the last page say? Yeah, so we will have two more blocks, And but I could go ahead and sew this up. I was kind of waiting still to see what fabrics I end up using in these blocks, and then these would be my helpers, so like for color, do I need to pull some color down here or a particular fabric I wanna pull down here? And until I make those, I don't know. So. I may or may not, but definitely I can sew that left up because that left side is now D-O-N-E, right? It's done. Now I want to point out another project that is on my website that I have not finished and several of you are working on it. Several of you, many of you have finished it. It was a sew along from a few years back. Moda Fabric designed all of these. Will you be my neighbor blocks? And I'm going to put the picture up here. Uh, of the quilt. This quilt is by Melissa Corey and she did the whole quilt during the sew along. And then now let me show you where mine is. So this is a picture of mine and how far I've gotten. I'm doing Christmas fabrics. And so I would like to reboot this one at some time, but all the patterns are there. So if you happen to be working on it, you can do yours. Or uh, if you want to start one, you can start it at any time. It's on my I Love to Make Quilts website. The links are below here and at my article today. And so while you're down below, would you please hit that subscribe button for me? Thank you. Mwah. And click the bell so that you always get a notice and we can hang out. All right. Yesterday in the comments, 
during our live chat. Apparently, the fabric I was showing you, uh, here it is, this um, dwell fabric, this great big uh, bug <laughs> is a, a lot of people feel it's a moth. So they said that's a moth based on its tilt of its wings that they have their wings down. They don't have any wings that sort of go up above the head. So now I've had to go and read what's the difference between a moth and a butterfly. And so you can do that too. It's very interesting. Uh, so now I know that's a beautiful moth. Uh, I still love it. Uh, and that panel is still available for a short time. I know they won't last long. They are amazing. I love those sayings. And the last thing is, is if you didn't watch Monday's video yet, you can always go back and watch it. Uh, I announced what the theme is for the next Block Wednesday, which will start the first Wednesday in July. And I have a project page up for it. It is a summer soiree. And a soiree is an evening party, a little bit fancier party. Uh, as somebody mentioned in the comments, it's not a Super Bowl party with chips and beer. <laughs> it's a little fancier dig because we need that. I think that we should celebrate summer and the theme, the underlying theme will be this summer soiree and all the uh, different components that make up a great evening party. Uh, and I just, maybe one of you will plan an evening party during this. I have found some links where people gave really good tips on how to run a successful party, uh, you know, more than just a get together or something where you're really trying to do a celebration. Summer soiree, and I'm using the figs and shirting fabric. So I have this is heavy, oh, I need two hands. This is I have my box, I have my project box, I have the fabric in here. And if you miss seeing it, it is kind of a I think it feels very summery. It is a bit of a 30s feel to it, all designed by my friend Joanna Figueroa. I am going to use this kind of a linen y color, which I link you to but I'm just loving it. See these, the, the pop of black in there is so fabulous and the grays and then this, this blue, cause this is the same color blue like I was doing the pillow from uh, with the crumb blocks and pops of red. We've got this buttery yellow, look at them. Look at them. It is so awesome. I cannot wait to sew with this. This great green, Joanna uses this shade of green a lot and I really like this orange too. This is also another sort of soft, very soft orange and her reds. Yep, yep, yep. I cannot wait to dig into that. We are gonna have so much fun. All right, my friend, it is time for you to make your good neighbor block. I cannot wait to see them. I love you, see you online.